My husband, Chad Simon, was a Marine infantryman and he was serving in Iraq. They were only in country for about two months before we got a phone call. Actually, November 8th is coming up that um, he'd been in the, a pretty bad accident. IED had exploded under the vehicle that he was on, on uh, driving. I remember being upset at how naive I was that, well, he's a staff sergeant. He's, a, he's in charge of a platoon of men. He doesn't get hurt. We take care of the people that get hurt. Like I'm here on the home front and I'm responsible for the women who get the call. This isn't supposed to happen to us. I was a mess. I was just really incredibly depressed. Um, incredibly depressed and sad. I was tired. I was really tired. <laughs> like, it's hard raising a kid by yourself. It's hard being a, a widow and all the expectations that come with that. Oh my gosh, I had no idea. When it was clear that we were gonna be moving to Texas, the motivating factor was schools. And out of nowhere, it was Keller for us. A woman from the church invited us to come and check out Elevate for him and um, for me to attend the regular services. When you talk about though, two people in two different places, we couldn't have been further apart. He was like, drop me off and go. And I was like, I don't want to talk to people. I was really resistant. I sat at the back of the church every service. I had my purse over my shoulder. During the last song, I might smile and wave at the pastor that preached. I wasn't really wanting to build relationships, didn't know what story I wanted to tell the people who I could trust. Um, but God was talking to me. I mean, I was sitting in the back, like looking around thinking, who told my business? <laughs> like, who told my business? How, really? How did they know that this was what I'm working on, what I'm praying about, what God's talking to me about? And what I couldn't um, stop wrestling with was believing that what I was seeing was real. But every week, every week, it was consistent, consistently warm. Um, people were consistently in pursuit of bringing me closer um, in spite of my resistance. <laughs> they just kept coming at me with love, kept introducing themselves, kept inviting me to coffees, kept offering to pray for me, kept asking about my son. They kept wanting to know who I was. It softened my heart. I started to get connected and let my guard down. I knew like this is where I need to be. There were relationships that were built in people's living rooms and then I stopped going to people's houses and hosted a couple of small groups in a row myself. I became more intentional about not wasting what God has done in my life. I had to give back. By showing up, serving in different areas, building relationships, getting to know people, listening to the sermons, signing up for the things that people were asked to sign up for, praying for the things, you know, participating. Like, I, we just went to, we did prepare. We went on a mission trip. We, God called, we said yes. All along, it was, it was Jesus. He put me in those situations so that I could experience him in people awkwardly coming to say hi to me, <laughs> people approaching me, people asking questions about me, people inviting me. Um, it was just Jesus' pursuit of my heart. And I think about people coming in and how they stand with their backs at that big, those big tall windows and they're either on their phone or in a coffee or they're, and they're hiding. And it's my place to go and get them and introduce myself and make sure that they know that there is a place for them in Milestone. I love that. And I think had I not experienced that, I would have just 
not known or thought about those people. But that is a serious part of my heart, is for women to come in, people to come in and know there's room for you here. It may seem like there's so many people, but there's a spot here for you.